We're working through the building blocks that we use to build probability models, and we have one more little piece to cover. There's a collection of standard rounded variables you need to know about. Here's a list of them. The printed notes list a couple more. This list isn't for you to go away and memorize. It's a list that you should come back to whenever you're trying to build a new probability model for whatever data set you have. And you think to yourself, is there some standard random variable I could use here? Or do I have to go to the bother of inventing my own from scratch? By the end of this course, you'll have seen all of these random variables used. And more importantly, you'll have seen what are the types of data for which I should use each of them. If you need to check out the details of any of these random variables, Wikipedia is perfectly fine. But watch out, because for some of them, Wikipedia uses one way to parameterize them and NumPy uses another, and it's so it's easy for bugs to slip in. So whenever you use one of these random variables, make sure you read the documentation carefully. Make sure you read the probability density function so you know exactly what you're working with. One small thing is worth mentioning here, something you've already learnt in earlier course on probability. A discrete random variable returns integers, or more generally, it could be a value from some finite or countable set, for example, a coin toss or a playing card chosen at random. Whereas a continuous random variable returns floating point numbers and it has to have a smooth cumulative distribution function. There's a specialist term for this. Next, there's one random variable that deserves very special mention, the Gaussian random variable, also called the normal. We use this one all the time in machine learning and data science. It's easy to work with, and it's often a surprisingly good approximation when we can't be bothered to work with a true distribution. Here's a very useful fact about normals. If you take a normal, and you add a constant and scale it, you end up with another normal, just with different parameters. Pause the video here and read how this works. This sort of thing just doesn't work for the other random variables. If you took a binomial and multiplied bit by a constant, what you'd end up with would not be a binomial. But it does work for a normal, and that's why normals are so easy to work with, and we'll be using this precise property time and time again in the examples we'll be working through. One more handy fact. If you add together two independent normal random variables, the parameters just add up, which also makes working with them really easy. Again, this doesn't usually happen. If you take two independent binomials and add them up, what you end up with won't be a binomial. Okay, so that finishes the first part of this section, modeling. The next video will be about the next step. Once we've designed a model, how do we do machine learning?